Hi, welcome to this week's video, Derby Watch. I'm Mike Watchmaker, along with my Derby Watch colleague, Jay Pribman. And Jay, this is our first Derby Watch video, Derby Watch of the Year. And we have Cairo Prince on top. He's been the favorite in Vegas for the past few weeks, and I've got him pegged at 5-1. to one, And he was very impressive winning the, the Holy Bull Stakes at Gulfstream in his last start. He really was, Mike. I thought his race was terrific. I like the way he pressed a hot pace, and I really like the acceleration that he showed to win going away. All of his races have been good, even the one time he got beat. So I think he's a deserving favorite at this point as we head towards the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, speaking about the one time he got beat, that was in his two-year-old finale, and that was in the Remsen Stakes. An oddly run Remsen Stakes. He was beaten only in nose after being held behind a very, very slow early pace. I actually thought he was best in that race. He was beaten in nose by Honor Code, who we're going to talk about in a minute. That might prove to be a very good race. It, it, it does. I mean, so far it has. Those two have come out of it and run well, but Wicked, Co uh, Wicked uh, Strong didn't run all that well. Remains to be seen, but let's, from the standpoint of Cairo Prince, at least his form is held up. He came back with a big effort to start the year. Okay, now one of the reasons why Cairo Prince is the favorite for the Kentucky Derby is because of questions surrounding last year's champion two-year-old shared belief, and uh, we went kind of bold in the first Derby watch. We decided not to go with shared belief on the list. And Jay, you were the big proponent for this and you convinced me and why don't we go over why he's not on Derby Watch? Well, it was outlined in the story that I wrote that accompanies our chart, but there were just a number of reasons. First and foremost, the fact that at the moment he's missed a significant amount of training time with a quarter crack. He's back training at Santa Anita. We expect him to work fairly soon, but our thought was it's gonna be easier to add him to the list if he shows progress and looks like he's going to make the Kentucky Derby than it would be to just continue to hold space for him on the list over the next few weeks until he gets back to the races. The chances of him making the San Felipe are extremely remote right now. It looks like if everything goes well, he's going to have to go out of town in order to have his first prep of the year. And that's if everything goes right. A big part of this, too, is that he's a gelding. He was bought with a long-term prognosis. They want this horse to last and to make a lot of money. It's not as though winning the Kentucky Derby is going to enhance his stallion value. And with the enhanced purses of all the Triple Crown races this year, or the other Triple Crown races, the Preakness and Belmont, there's other spots for a horse like this. So in, we're not saying that he can't win the Kentucky Derby. We just thought that at this point in time, based on where he's at, it was the smart move to leave him off for now. Well, we have co-second choices at 6-1 to one on Derby Watch this week, and they are both Shug McGee train horses, Honor Code, and Top Billing. And you talk about questions surrounding sheer belief. Uh, there are some questions surrounding Honor Code, the aforementioned winner of the Remsen last fall. Well, at least he's been back in training. He had uh, a little bit of a setback at Payson Park the middle of January. He's been sent to Gulfstream Park. He did work there this week, and it looks like he's back on the beam, and he's pointing for it looks like he'll probably make something like the Rebel Stakes in mid-March. So that's what we're looking to see uh, from Honor Code, assuming that everything continues to go well with him. Uh, top Billing uh, ran an allowance race on the uh, a Holy Bull Stakes undercard at the same mile in the 16th distance uh, that Kyra Prince won the Holy Bull at. Uh, top Billing won that race very impressively. The time was a little bit slower than the Holy Bull was, but still he did it the right way. I thought it was a really good performance, Mike. To me, second best performance I've seen so far this year of the horses we have on our list to what Cairo Prince did in the Holy Bull that day. He's come a long way in a short amount of time, and I'm really eager to see him in his next start, which is going to be the Fountain of Youth. All right, now briefly, Jay, we've got two horses on Derby Watch this week uh, that are running uh, this weekend. Uh, they're both running in the Southwest Stakes, uh, Strong Mandate and Tapature. Well, I thought Strong Mandate was one of the elite two-year-olds of last year. He was kind of an inconsistent horse. Some races very good, some not so well. I thought he ran a deceptively good race in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile from a very tough post. Eager to see how he does in his first start of the year. And then as for Tapature, Mike, to win a, as a maiden in the Kentucky Jockey Club, I thought was a, a significant feat for him. He's obviously a good horse. I'm not sure how strong the field he beat that day was. But this is a great intersectional rivalry to see a horse who had not run against the elite last year, that being Tapature, run against a horse who had been among the elite last year. And now we'll see where Tapature stacks up against these horses. For me, the big revealing thing about these horses this weekend will be to see what kind of steps forward they've taken as three-year-olds. I'd like to see them both run a little bit faster in terms of buyer figures. I agree. And that's uh, one of the fun parts of this time of the year is seeing who takes that big step forward as we head towards Saturday, May the 3rd. 
Jay, thanks always for your insight, and thanks everybody out there for watching. And we'll be back with another video Derby Watch next week.